is the hard work and passion Beyond take two, take a walk beyond Hollywood Beyond the lights, camera, action Is the hard work and yes. passion Yes it is Welcome, 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 welcome This is the Beyond Take Two podcast brought to you by Beyond Hollywood International Film Festival. I am your host, Madge. I'm your host, Veronica. And today we have a special, 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 special guest in the building with us. This man is a director extraordinaire. Um, If you like Lifetime movies, like I like Lifetime movies. And and me. Then you, (laughs) you have seen this man's work. Um, there are too many to name, too many to count, mm-hmm. but um, if you live on Lifetime, you are watching this man at work every week. Um, whether you like it or not. I don't know about every week, but uh, we'll take it. Thank you for that intro. Yeah, I got Mr. four specials. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Doug Campbell Hi. is yes. in the building with us. Hi, guys. Thank How you, you doing, Doug? Well, thank you for having me. And yeah, thanks for doing this. We awesome. finally were able to get you in. You're so busy. Well, it's been busy. It's been good, yeah. but it, but yeah, thank you. Keep on saying that. Yeah, it has been busy, and I'm lucky to have it be busy. Then we hope it continues. Yes. You know, right now we're in the middle of this bizarre strike, so we'll see how that affects everybody. How's that going for you with the strike? Are you still working right now, or are you just well, finishing off production? How's that going? It's weird. I'm in post on a couple projects, and then I am writing a script right now that I will then direct. Uh, for a company out in Canada. I'm able to work in both Canada and the, and oh, the States, amazing. which is nice, thanks yes. to my lovely wife, Barbara. Nice. Awesome. Um, Hi, Barbara. Shout out, Barbara. Shout out. <laughs> Barbara She's the most amazing. Well, Good Barbara. Deal. She's actually Barbara Arsenault. Uh, oh. And, and yeah, anyway, she was, she's instrumental in me working in Canada. Yeah. Like, key. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be there unless it was for her. So right. Anyway, so I got a gig there, and then um, we'll see what happens after that. But it's been busy, like, for the past... God, I don't know. 15, 15 months, I've done about twelve movies or that something. Is so I, good. Wow. I can't remember. They're they're starting to blend. They're starting okay. to blur. Okay. But it's okay. I'm taking Prevagen. Yeah. And I'm hoping I don't forget. <laughs> so you know, it's okay. And you were in one of them <laughs> recently. Yes. So yes. Thank yes. Thank you for helping us thank out. Thank you for having me. Sure. Yes. She's in Spinning Out of Control. Don't watch it. Well, yes. well yeah, watch it. <laughs> well, well, watch well, it's a good it? movie, and she's 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 beautiful in it. What what thank was you. it originally called again? It was called Wicked Wi-Fi Workout, Wicked. and that was my title, and I liked it. But you know, I, I, got I, I actually love that title. That's a I just really didn't cool like the title. outfits I was in, like the workout outfit. I was like, you didn't you didn't have your Nike fit on? I didn't have the Nike fit on. Why not? Because it had us, you know. Be certain colors and oh, you can't you do like name brand on yeah, the you movies. Can't do name either. Brand either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you got to watch all that. So yeah, but it was fun. Yeah, I'm glad you. Had yeah, it. and I saw that you were working on a film. Wait, wait, oh, okay, wait, okay. wait, wait. I'm wait. just You're excited to, to have Doug here. Relax, <laughs> pump your brakes. Okay, let's go. We we are going to get into all things Doug Campbell. We're going to get all up in your business. Yeah. Uh, but first. We have our buttered up segment. All right. So the, on um, on our podcast, we take popcorn, we taste it, we rate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, we're, we're movie lovers, so you know. know we love popcorn. I wasn't prepared for this, but okay. <laughs> All right. You have to try it. Are you on a diet? No, I should. Everybody be. claims we're on a diet every time they come on this yeah, show. I, I should be. But I'm <laughs> anyhow, sure, sure. I'm on a diet, but I'm still going to. Not for pop. Okay, let's go for it. All right. All right. So today's Buttered Up segment is brought to you by. Oh, wow. Nobody. But uh, we are trying Rob's backstage popcorn wow. again. Sweet and salty. Last time we tried the barbecue. Okay. Um, Should I put so, the bowl? Yeah. Yeah. You want to open it up? Yes. Look, Doug takes I charge. Love I like Doug. that. Yeah. Yes. That's a director right that there. That is a director. <laughs> All those years of catering and craft service, you know. <laughs> you learn how to do stuff. Yes, anyway, you yeah. learn how to work. All right, here we go. Oh, my good golly. Oh, my gosh. There that you looks go. so For the host. Mean. Well, I mean, the you're the, the special most. guest, so yeah, okay. no, you take on. first dibs. Okay, first dibs on this. All right, that's cool. Mm. Hey, it's Rob's backstage popcorn. Mm-hmm. Sweet and salty. Mm-hmm. That's nice. That's nice. Light. Good. It's nice. Yeah. Gluten-free. Okay. Can't beat that. Mm. Should we all crunch into the microphone? Mm. Uh, so a- ASMR type. It tastes like there's like a 
a seasoning to yeah, it. Yeah, it tastes similar to the barbecue one. Oh my gosh. It tastes Rob, like- you know what you're doing. Mm. It tastes similar to the barbecue one. Doug, on a scale yes. of one to ten, what yes. would you give that? Oh good lord, at least at least nine plus. Nine plus? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh-huh. Sure. Very nice. Yeah. Anyway, so there you have it. <laughs> Veronica, what do you give it? Veronica gonna give it a twelve. She wanted to give it a ten so bad. I can see it on her face. I'm gonna Be give critical. It, I'm gonna give it a seven. Ooh. You gonna give it a seven? Hardcore. Mm. It's so good, but we've had so much popcorn on the show that I've had better. Okay. You've become a connoisseur. <laughs> okay. All right. This yeah. is what we do. Okay. Tearing that shit up. Um, oh, I can eat that as a meal. I it's so good. Am, oof. Mm. <sighs> I am conflicted because it does taste similar to the barbecue flavor. kind of does. It does taste similar. And I... But it's sweet and salty. But I didn't get no sweet. I only got like salty. Did you taste the sweet, Doug? No. I tasted no, You I guys didn't have enough. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 6.5. <laughs> okay. Even a harder critic. Yeah, oh my he, gosh. He's really tough. 6.5. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He's tough. He's hey. not fair sometimes. No, yeah. What? <laughs> I am being fair. Rob's backstage popcorn, everybody. Um, Shout out. Shout out to Rob, man. He he does put out a great product. Um, it is good, but when when we're rating it, you know what I mean. Yeah, we gotta gotta, be hardcore. gotta, gotta be, be hardcore with it, man. Yeah, okay. you know, yeah. Doug knows he's a director. He knows. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm 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 grateful for any any food these days that gets across my lips. Just to have food is, is a nice thing. Ah. Shout out to Rob's backstage popcorn. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you for the popcorn, you. Rob. All right, uh, Doug. Yes, sir. Um, let us know where you're from. Um, and how you got started in film? Yes. Please. Okay. I uh, grew up in this, the West San Fernando Valley in a little town called Canoga Park, California. Okay. And I went to Canoga Park High School. Okay. And I, along with my buddies, when we were 10 years old at Sunny Bray Avenue Elementary School. Oh, wow. We would put together little skits on Friday. And we got into a rhythm where I would write something on the weekend and then we would rehearse it during the week and then we'd put it up on Friday. And they were, of course, ridiculously juvenile. We were 10 years old. <laughs> wow. But we would do that every week and the teacher would let us do it. And, in, in class? Yeah. And oh, they would take cool. a break. It's like, okay, they, the kids are now putting on their skits. And, of course, the other kids in the class were like, oh, God, not these people. Why are they doing this? <laughs> anyway, so, so that begat when I was 14 years old. Wow. <clears throat> One of our teachers um, brought in a Super 8 film. Marion Enfield was her name. Mm. Uh, She brought in a Super 8 film that the students in the year prior had done. Mm. And I'll never forget it. I'm sitting in the back of this dark classroom at Sutter uh, uh, Junior High School, John A. Sutter Junior High School, and I saw this movie, and I thought to myself, I can do better than that. Mm. And... I've been trying to do better than that ever since. Mm. Wow. So that begat <clears throat> making little Super 8 films with my buddies, the same people that were doing the skits back when we were 10. Now we were in high school doing it. And wow. then that begat me going to uh, UCLA. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting at UCLA and I'm looking through the course catalog. And I'm, I was just so ignorant and stupid. I, I went, oh my God, look at this course catalog. They give a degree in film. I go, I do that for fun. Yeah, I do that for fun in the summer. So then I realized I couldn't get into UCLA's film school because I couldn't spa- couldn't pass Spanish three to save my ass. Mm. And so uh, I ended up applying to a school called California Institute of the Arts in Valencia. Okay. Mm. And lo and behold, I did get in there, and I was I was blessed to go there, and it, I it was the best money I ever spent because I had uh, a couple of wonderful wonderful teachers. I had uh, Sandy Alexander McKendrick or Alexander Sandy McKendrick. I had Gil Dennis. I had Johanna Demetrakis. I had wonderful teachers that uh, I use their teachings and especially Sandy's teachings every day since, Mm. whether I am directing, whether I am writing, and I consider myself a a director who writes an awful lot, or whether I'm teaching. Mm. And that whether I'm teaching screenwriting or directing or acting for film, I use those teachings every day because they work. They I apply them and they work. Mm -hmm. So long story longer, in film school, 
uh, I partnered up with two wonderful guys, Scott Mulvaney and Dan Salakovich. And we decided after film school that we would do a feature film. Back then in the dinosaur period, everybody in LA had a script, mm. but few people had films. Right, right. Nowadays, you throw a rock in a Starbucks and you can ricochet it off yeah. of five, <laughs> five directors. Right. Everybody's got a movie. But, but yeah. back then, it was either shoot it on 35 or if you shot on this little thing called 30 frame video, you weren't taken seriously. Yeah. Mm. So we, we said, okay, bound and determined, no matter what, we're going to shoot our little movie that we, that we prepared. Uh, and if we had to do it on, you know, for 60,000 bucks on 16 millimeter on the weekends, we'd do it. Well, we put together a script. We put together a really good-looking t- trailer. And we shot, you know, today they would call them proof, proof of concepts. Yeah. But back then it was a trailer. Mm-hmm. And uh, we put together this really good-looking trailer. We put together a group of people from film school in our prospectus, you know, our cinematographer, our production designer, et cetera, our makeup artist, blah, blah. And um, we met some guys who wanted to raise money for feature films. The, literally, I'm not kidding you. The day I finished the screenplay, my partner Scott found these gentlemen who wanted to raise money for feature films. Wow! Out of the, it was like, and I'm not kidding you. The day after, I, I, I pressed, <laughs> you know, the crazy. end on the typewriter. Yeah. yeah, on the typewriter. Yeah, back then, <laughs> they found the money, and so then they took these guys. Took two years. They were called GCO Pictures at the time, and they took about two years to raise the money. And there I was at age 24, on a set in Stockton, California with a 30-day schedule, Mm -hmm. Airflex cameras, a terrific cast. Wow. Uh, I had Sharon Bialy as my casting director. You might know her. She's one of the bigger casting Mm -hmm, directors, mm -hmm. you know, going. Sharon, yes. Yes, you probably have. And anyway, she got us a great, great cast. And there I was up there directing a movie with a 30-day schedule and uh, utterly, utterly blessed. Completely, completely blessed. Now, did I practice before that? (laughs) Yes. Yes. I mean, I... You know, you make, when you're on the way there, you make 20 blah, blah short films. Mm. Practice, 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 practice until it's bursting out of you, until you go, the next thing I do has got to be a feature. Yeah. Mm. And that's where I felt because I'd just been at it steadily Mm. uh, since a kid, since, you know, being a 14 year old. So then, you know, I thought, okay, great. I made a film. Uh, uh, Metro Golden Mayor, MGM UA picked it up. Wow. Yeah, Yeah. We were, you know, Amazed by that. CBS Fox put it out on video. Everything's great. Nothing happened. The phone did not ring. Now, what, what was the name of the movie? The name of the movie uh, internationally was called, and the orig- original title was called An American Murder. Okay. And then domestically, it was retitled by the geniuses at MGM as Season of Fear, which I hated. <laughs> Do you think that's the reason no, why? No, no. I'll tell you the reason why. Okay. The reason why was the screenplay. We shot it well, we cast it well, uh, I directed it well, I will admit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our production design was gorgeous. Everything was gorgeous. We went on location. It was beautiful yeah. film. There's only one problem. The script wasn't filled with enough open conflict. Mm. It was boring. Mm. It was boring. So I went through a little bit of a nervous breakdown and said, what the hell did I do wrong? Yeah. How did I screw up so badly? So then I put myself through self-imposed uh, film uh, screenwriting school again and I read every book I could on screenwriting and I read every screenplay I could and I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and now I can proudly say that if you give me an assignment to write a screenplay I can deliver you a screenplay that is full of conflict and tight and entertains and functions as opposed to you know an experiment that may or may not work I can Mm. deliver that for you yeah and I've learned that the hard way Mm. Mm. and so there I was with uh, a feature film under my belt uh, that had been distributed at the Cannes market mm, wow. and had been all over the world, wow. big distribution, whatever, blah, blah. And I was back at the restaurant bussing tables. Wow. I'm not wow. kidding. I'm not kidding. So up and down and up and down. Yeah. And then, anyway, so that's the long story of how I got my first gig. Mm-hmm. And then later gigs is, is another podcast episode. You're going to need three hours to go through that one. <laughs> But yeah, we got time. We got time. I don't know if you got time, but we got time. <laughs> you know, they, they you, Come on over and talk about yourself. Like, I got time, you know. My favorite subject, of course, is narcissist we. So, you know. No, anyway. So, yeah, that's how I, uh, that uh, first gig came about. And then the challenge is, of course, yeah, you make your first film. What about your second one? Right. What about your third one? Yeah. Right. How do you keep it going? 
if you don't have that film that wins the Beyond Hollywood Film Festival, right. Right. or wins, I, my, I, like I love that. And yes. I remembered, I remembered. <laughs> Take a prevagen. No, but you know what I mean. If you don't have that festival winner, mm -hmm. then what? Yeah. Then what? What do you do? Mm. Well, you know, I, what do you quit filmmaking? Right. You give. Oh, well, I guess I, I, you know, the people at Sundance didn't like me, so I'm not going to do <laughs> right, right, right. Screw that. You're going to go forward to make films. So that was right. my, you know, right. just, you know, just stick at it. Yeah. Now like, let me let me ask yeah. what. I, I, some people have, um, you know, they, they don't want to date themselves. But what what year was that that you made your first film? I won't date myself, but I'm kidding. Okay. That was well, let's see, uh, uh, that was 1987 that we shot it, and it got released probably in 89 ish. 89, okay. 88, yeah. 89, mm. and then uh, yeah, so it was around then. Wow. So yeah, that was yeah. back. Yeah, back. Yeah, they you know where they we drove our our. Dinosaurs to work. And we <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I still, I still have a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> so yeah. you make your first film. Yeah. You back to Bus and Tables. Yes. So how, how do we get to the next film then? Yes. God bless you for asking. And you're taking me back to it as, I, as, I, as a sweat bubble goes down my armpit. <laughs> Um, Down your arm. <laughs> you know how you know how you get that. You get IBBS too. You uh, have IBBS. What is IBBS? Yeah, what is IBBS? You know what that is. Sound guys will talk about IBBS. What is IBBS? It's a terrible condition that women have. When you try to put a microphone right here, it's called in between boob sweat. Oh yes. So anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, this is, a, is this is this a family show? Sorry about that. No, Not anymore. Talk about Please. all of that stuff. <laughs> sorry, so, I think that's happened to me before. <laughs> IBBS. So anyway, so I'm back in the restaurant business with, a, with the motion picture that had gotten distribution, blah, blah. And I'm wondering, what the hell did I do wrong with my life? I put myself back into self-imposed writing school, like I told you. And then I got very, very lucky. Uh, again, the cinematographer for that film, a man by the name of Chuy, Chuy Elizondo, took the Goldberg can, took two reels of the 35 millimeter print. You know, every everything today is an upload. Right. Back then, it was a you know, it was like a it was a reel of yeah, film, right? Yeah. That you would put on the projector. He took that into a company called ITC, and he auditioned for a job as the cinematographer on a film that they were doing called Stepfather Part Two. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm at my dad's house one day. The phone rings, and it's the director of Stepfather Two, a lovely guy by the name of Jeff Burr, who you should have on this show. He's a wonderful director, and he's made more films than God. Awesome. And he's Jeff a terrific Burr. human being. And he called me up. He said, hey, Doug, this is Jeff Burr. And um, I'm doing my best Jeff Burr imitation, because many people do. Uh, and, and he said, uh, the, you, uh, he asked me about the cinematographer, and I gave him a good recommendation, et cetera. And then he said, you know, you ought to, you ought to talk to the people over at ITC. They liked your film. And they thought, who the hell made this movie? So I did. And I went over there, and I... Met with these wonderful guys at ITC, uh, Dennis Brown, Vince Chung, Ben Montano, Peter Frankovich, and they took a liking to me, and we talked, and seven months later-ish, I'm still at the damn restaurant, and I picked up a keg, and I don't know anything about beer, because I don't drink, <laughs> and I picked up one of these kegs, and it has the spigot on the end of it, yeah, right? You know, yeah. that you, mm -hmm. and it swung around, hit me in the eye, and I got this big ass shiner. Oh my god! So I had this shiner, and the phone <laughs> rings, and I found out that ITC was looking for me, and they wanted to replace a forty-year-old director. Wow! With a twenty-five-year-old me director. Wow! Replace this guy, and they wanted to do it secretly. Mm. So they said, "We're gonna we're gonna message you the script over, and we want you to watch the original movie Zapped." And we want you to come in and pitch us on Sunday in secret at one of the executive's apartments. And I said, okay. And I, Wait, so did the so, director already film the no, movie? No, he hadn't filmed oh, the movie. Okay, they, okay. They, were a week, they were a week and two days away from shooting. Okay, okay. And they, were, they said they'd had it, they'd, they'd gotten frustrated or whatever the deal, and it yeah. didn't work out with this original director. Mm. So they, they were going to re replace him. But they needed to get a guy before they were going to fire him. Right. Yep. So this was all behind closed doors. So I went to the video store, and I rented the VHS copy of a movie called Zapped. And I thought to myself, this is the worst film I've ever seen. <laughs> and now I'm now going to read the screenplay for the sequel that I might direct. So then I read the script, and no offense to my, my buddies who wrote the script, but it was 
arguably one of the worst scripts I'd ever read. <laughs> wow. Or at least I didn't understand it. Let's just say that. I didn't understand it. And I will admit that. I didn't understand it. Uh, and I said to myself, okay, I have a choice. I can either go back to the restaurant business on Monday or I can step onto a $1.6 million feature film and be their director. Right. And Darren Scott, who was a director now, but he was a producer at the time, he pulled me aside. He says, Doug, don't, don't do this. Don't do this show. It's gonna be, it, you, you don't want to do this show. And I said, Darren, you know, I got to work, man. I, I got to pay my <laughs> bills and I love you, but I got to do it. Yeah. So anyway, Darren probably doesn't remember that. But anyway, so I did the, sh I did the film okay. with a week worth of prep and we went and did it. And I, it was a great, wonderful time. And it was a teen comedy. And my first film was a thriller, sort of this, you know, dark, brooding, father-son, murder mystery thriller thing. Mm. And based on personal stuff, and then the next thing was zapped again. He's got telekinetic powers and he can, bing, he can pop your bra with telekinesis. That was the story of the movie. Yeah. So if you were sitting here right now, your bra would be popped if the guy <laughs> was sitting next to you. And that was the entire intent of the movie. Of course, I didn't understand this film. Yeah. Because my idea of a teen comedy was The Graduate with from Mike Nichols and Dustin Hoffman. Right. Right, right, right. I didn't know what a teen comedy was. I haven't seen Porky's, nor do I ever plan to. <laughs> I didn't know what these movies were, right. but I was 25. So they probably thought, oh, that guy's, he's 25. He he'll, he'll get it. Right, right, right. I didn't fucking get it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get it. But then we made the movie and then we screened it in this theater in Northridge. And Jeff Apple, the producer, is a very, very smart man. He said, we're going to pack that theater with kids and we're going to screen it for the executives who own the picture and try to convince them to go theatrical with it. Mm. And Jeff was 100% right because these kids in that movie theater were laughing at stuff right, that I never right. thought was even funny or right. I didn't even know it was a joke. And I turned to the person sitting next to me, I go, they think this is funny. And they go, yeah, Doug, you directed a comedy. Mm. And I was like, I guess we did. Yeah. I, I just didn't understand that still kind of stupid. Right. No, right. I still don't get it. But it's like, okay, I did it. And I mean, I, you know, it, I don't know, whatever. What it, was the age for, you know, that the kids, what age like was teenagers. it? Like teenagers. Oh, teenagers. Yeah, High yeah. school. Okay. No, no. The age was probably younger than high school because wow. one thing I learned working in children's television a couple years later was that you make a movie, you cast your show, if it's a kid's show, the little kids want to look at little bigger kids and the high school kids want to look at college kids, mm. right? Everybody wants to look up. So if our, right. if our high school kids were acting silly, our demographic was, was like middle school. Middle school. Right. Yeah. Middle schoolers. Yeah. Got it. And I just... I didn't get it. Anyway, <laughs> the movie was a success. And ironically, just yesterday, I was interviewed for a podcast about that movie. It's got this following. It's got this strange, bizarre following. Yeah, and I've following, never, yeah. in a weird way, and I've never done anything like it since, nor do I plan to. But anyway, it was a fun movie to make. And that was my second film. So yeah. got that film made. And then they wow. liked me for reshoots on Stepfather 2. And I did that. And so there I was with two and a half feature films under my belt. Everything's great. All those wonderful executives that I had at ITC, they loved me. They thought I was a great guy. They loved working with me. And guess what happened? They brought in new management. They all got fired. Oh my Everybody gosh. got laid off. The whole group of them got laid off. I had no contacts there. So wow. there I was, I kid thee not, with two and a half feature films under my belt, screened all around the world. Oh, by the way, the people from Nelson Entertainment who saw the film in the theater, mm -hmm. they came this close, and I'm holding my fingers an inch apart from each other to going theatrical with it. And, wow. But they didn't want to, they couldn't get the right deal or whatever. So I was that close to getting a theatrical, re a theatrical release wow. on a teen comedy. That could have changed my life in a bad way or a good way. I don't know. Right. Anyway, so there I was, two and a half feature films under my belt. And there I was back at the restaurant, bussing tables, the same restaurant. Mm. Up wow. and down, now, up now, and down. Now does life the, of the film industry. The, yeah. Does the... <laughs> Do the people at the restaurant know that you're directing yes. these films? They do. So they they're do. okay with welcoming yes. you Yeah, back. they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, but they didn't care. I mean, it's yeah. my, I, I would tell my uh, waiter friends, who are all actors. Right, yeah. right. You know, it's like, so when you're in the restaurant business, it's wonderful because you're surrounded by writers and actors. Right, and, and right. Things. Anyway, um, I'll never forget it. I was in the back at the Rusty Pelican restaurant in Encino on Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> With my little Hawaiian shirt and my, my dockers nice. and my little blue apron, and I'm polishing silverware. Wow. And I'm, whatever, I'm 27, eight years old now, right. college degree, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there polishing silverware and busting tables. The problem was, why did I bust tables? Why didn't I wait tables? Because I can't think like that. I will forget your order. 
I have to write everything down. Wow. I'm a terrible waiter. I would be a terrible waiter. So I just, so I said, so I'm going to be a busman. So, so the waitress comes back. She's really cute. I'll never forget her. She goes, oh, Doug. She goes, over on table 20, there's some, uh, there's some guys in the movie business. You got to go talk to them. I'm like, oh God, okay. <laughs> so I go over to table 21 and I clear table 21 and I got all the, you know, the, the dishes on my little tray there and I see these three guys talking. And uh, I, I, I said, hey, uh, gentlemen, I couldn't overhear, I couldn't help but overhear you talking. Uh, uh, you guys are in the film business. And the guy leans back and he's really cool. And he leans back in his chair and he goes, yeah. <laughs> he goes, he goes, I got a, I got a, I got a, a three picture first look deal over at ITC. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> and I'm standing there and I got my little rag out of my pocket and everything. And I, I've got the pitcher of water. Yeah. And I say, ITC, interesting. I just directed two feature films for them. Wow. And this guy looked at me with this mixture of pity and fear in his eyes. <laughs> That's where everyone got, was fired. That's where everybody got laid That off. was where yeah. I did Zapped Again for my second yeah. pic picture. And then I did another show for them, uncredited. I did reshoots on Stepfather 2. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anyway, so I did like two movies for them. Right, right. right. And all the guys got fired. And then the new guys that came in hired these guys. And this guy looked at me, he goes, what? He was this mixture of pity and fear in his eyes. He goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, it's a tough business. Would you like some more water? <laughs> True story. Wow. True story. I'm not making it up. Up and down, up and down. Our business goes yes, up it and is. down. It is. So You're anybody out there who is wondering as you're working your lift job, as you're working your Starbucks job, right. as you're working your factory job, bottling, you know, putting caps on shampoo bottles, <laughs> and you want to do this thing, other people working right alongside you have done that too. I'm one of them. Right. And, and that's just how, everybody's got a side gig. Yeah. In our, and not everybody, but a lot of people in our business have second sources of income, whether, you know, whether it be real estate or a teaching right. job or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Back then for me, it was, I would go, I would hop back and forth between to the restaurant. restaurant business and stuff like that. Yeah. I would, and I would go from being a PA to directing a television movie and yeah. back to a PA. Yep. And I, you know, it, it back and forth, anything to pay bills. If you don't come from money, right, what are you right, going to do? Right. You, you got to hustle. You got to pay your bills. Right. You got to hustle. Yeah. You got to get a side gig. Yeah. So, so pride yourself in the fact that you have a side gig and that you are, per, are, kicking ass on that side gig in order to have your career. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't feel shamed about it. That's what we do. We're artists. We, we made a pact uh, uh, with the devil. And uh, <laughs> the devil said, you're going to be poor for most of your life unless you have a sugar daddy. Indeed. So, so there you Indeed. have it. So that's been my sort of up and down journey. Wow. And, yeah. Wow. wow. Man, that's, that's, that's fucked up, he said. That's, yeah, that's, I know. A, that's, a, <laughs> that's, that's a whole show in 20 minutes. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. So, so wait, so what happened to the conversation after that when you said, do you need some more water or do you need some water? Oh, I don't, can't remember. It was a long time ago. I pro it, it was probably like, uh, well, good luck with your project. And right. yeah, good, right, luck, right, with, right. good luck here, whatever. And then they, I probably walked in the kitchen and they thought, oh God, what a loser. What a loser. <laughs> you know, we're going to find out who he is or whatever. Like a I don't guy know. busting tables. Uh, yeah, what's he doing? <laughs> You know, his films must have been pretty bad if he's here now. Like, yeah, well, whatever. You know, think, think what you think. Our business is an unforgiving sort of business. Right. You, it's cutthroat for sure. Well, you know, if you're not, if you're not lucky, you're not lucky. If you're, yeah. you know, whatever. And you, you try your best and you work at it. So, But, you know, getting gigs for me has been pretty much 99.9% .9 friends. Yeah. Right, right, right. Somebody speaks well for you at a company. Relationship. Says, yeah. yeah, says, hey, you ought to see Maj's, uh, did I pronounce it right? Maj, yeah. Maj, you ought to see Maj's uh, screenplay. Yeah. He's a good writer. You, you know, somebody fights for you who isn't necessarily your agent, mm -hmm. mm. you know, or, or whatever. I wish I had what actors have. Actors have breakdown services. They have actors right. access. Yeah. They can go on official auditions. If I could audition for an executive producer mm. every week or a showrunner every week, I would love that. Yeah. Mm. I don't have that. Wow. That's a good idea. It's called an agent. That's and I point. have, yeah. I sort of have one and he puts me up, he, he sends me up for stuff, but they're always, they're not looking for directors. They're looking for scripts. Right. And they said to me, you got any scripts in the drawer? I go, no, because everything I write gets made. Yeah. Mm. So no, I don't. Yeah. I can show you. T I can show you thirty movies that have been made, right. but but I'll, you'll have to hire me to write one for you. Right. You know. So I'm in this 
bizarre position if I don't have spec scripts in the drawer just waiting to be somebody's project. So anyway, so I get hired to write and direct now, and I love it, and that's I'm very, wow. very blessed in that regard. Now, let me ask you, how long did it take? Because it seems like, <laughs> well, I, I hope you're not going back to the restaurant these days, Mm-mm. but um, how long did it take for you to, to get like consistent work where you finally retired from the restaurant business? Well, I don't know if I'll ever be retired from, from the willingness to do a day job. I will yeah. never be retired from that. I have a day job. It's called teaching. Okay. okay. So, so let's put it this way. Only four years out of my life was I only a director. And that was when I was directing in the mid-90s for Chuck Sellier out in Utah. And he'd call me back for television series or, or TV movies to direct for him. And, you know, I think I did literally four projects for him in those four years. Mm -hmm. And only in those four years was I only a director. Before and after that, I always had a second gig, whether it would be, you know, uh, catering, working for a realtor, delivering flowers, Mm -hmm. or uh, uh, being a PA uh, on a commercial. I'd go, I'd go, I would direct a TV movie. And then the next week, uh, in order to pay bills, I would be on a, on a, a, you know, whatever, a Toyota commercial, yeah. you know, picking up cigarette butts. Yeah. Mm. Going from the wow. top guy to the guy picking up cigarette butts or whatever, sweeping up the floor. And you know what? The money goes into your bank. You yeah. got to pay You got to pay your bills. I'd, I'd rather stay busy than not. So luckily though, uh, in, in 2001, again, through a friend, and I gave her her first costume design job, Barbara Inglehart, mm. lovely, lovely woman, and a, and a, lifelong friend. I haven't talked to her in many years, but I will always consider her a sister. She got me a job working for a film school. And so that got me that side gig of being a teacher. And so that's what I'll do when I'm not writing and directing is I'll teach. And I love that. I love teaching and I love sharing this craft. I'm very, very passionate about it, obviously, because otherwise why would I do it? What film school is it? Uh, well, I was teaching, I teach at a film school in Tokyo, and then I was also teaching for 10 years at Academy of Art University in San Francisco. And nice. I worked with Diane Baker up there, and she's wow. a wonderful, wonderful woman, um, and it was a great gig. But, you know, anyway, so I'm, right now I just have the one, but yeah. yeah. In Tokyo? In Tokyo. Um, so you do it like by Zoom, I, I would assume, or something Correct. like that. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, how long have you been at that school? Uh, since 2003. Oh, wow. Yeah. 20 years. 2002, 2002-ish, yeah. 20 so that's, that's the side gig now. You know, and I, you know, a lot of people do. You know, actors will do that. They'll teach on the side mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Writer, yeah. Writers do that. That's what we no, do. No, no, no. I went to L.A. film school. I went for music okay. production, though. Okay. But a lot, a lot of my teachers were producers sure. and songwriters, had stuff out, had Grammys. I'm like, yeah. But they, but they, but they teach. But they yeah. <laughs> but they, they got to keep, yep, yeah. got to keep the bills paid somehow. Yeah, yep. definitely. Ours, definitely. Right. That's our business. So anyway, so I take pride in the fact that yep. you got your side gig and you do it. You know? Indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. So what, um, let, let's, let's talk about your movies. Okay. Because yes. you, you have, how, how many movies do you have under your belt? Oh, goodness. You Direct it. Uh, I think like 55. 55 features. 55 features. Which doesn't include television and doesn't include the shorts. But like 55 feature films, and I think I've written like, I don't know, 35 of them. If I have it credited, if I, sometimes I will do rewrites on them and not get a credit. Right, right. Um, uh, but yeah, so that, that's, that's the current number at present. Now, other guys have directed a lot more, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm starting to get up there in numbers, and it's kind of fun. And I've been very, very lucky to have some terrific executive producers as of late, uh, you know, trust me to come in and, and write for them and direct for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these are, these are relationships that you work hard and long in order to establish, and you deliver. Right. No matter right. what, you deliver. You don't you you know any advice to filmmakers out there? You know the relationship. In my my opinion, the relationship is more important than your movie. Mm. Yeah. Because unless unless you're going to say to yourself, "Hey man, I'm going to burn bridges. I don't care what I I don't care if they like me or not. I'm going to make my <laughs> film no matter what." Right. They won't work with you again. Right. Your right. film might be brilliant, but they'll go. Eh, that guy's a pain in the ass. Right, right. Right. So I'd rather have a good relationship. So it's about keeping those relationships uh, yeah. happy. Yeah. That's what it's about. So. so is there a particular genre that you're like great at that they 
that they ask of you or like that's a good question yeah like what types of movies are it's it's the thriller the psychological thriller and or the drama Okay. Not not the teen comedy about you know popping bras. Popping bras. No, I don't I, get I those. See that. What's that? Like, Zap two. You said you don't want it. <laughs> you know, that's a good film. The actors are great. Kelly Williams and Todd Andrews are in it. Terrific actors. The film I worked you know. on with you with Wicked Wife. I was yeah. a thriller. That was a thriller yeah. about a woman who obsesses over her Peloton instructor. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, they're thrillers. They're usually you know it's one or two. <laughs> things. It's either re- uh, revenge or obsession. Revenge or obsession, and that's okay. that's okay. what they're about usually. Okay, and uh, boy, you can you can sure find some plots with revenge right, and obsession. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I get I get trusted to do the thrillers and sort of you know, we, you try as best you can within your fourteen day schedule within your you know nine commercial act breaks to give it all the love that you can and make it as unique and as interesting as you can mm-hmm. and liken it to i liken it to perhaps what hitchcock had to do in the 50s where you know you have the suspense of the person walking up the stairs and the shadow on the wall of them walking but you don't see the knife you know slice a throat mm. you you might cut away right before right so right. the violence has to be a little tamer and the 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 sex has to of course be very tame because you're putting it on television even if it is cable right and uh but it's a story, and it, they're primarily uh, intended for a female audience. Mm-hmm. And so we'll have our mother-daughter dramas. We'll have our female protagonists. I've been lucky to have a couple of shows where the entire cast was black. Yeah. And I was like, great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You mean a, a black person can play a bad guy? <laughs> great. A black woman can be a villain? Great. Yes. It's so nice now because we, we didn't. We couldn't do that. Right. We couldn't have people of color yeah. in villainous roles. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. There's big, oh, yeah, sure. You, so that's why you always say, why, you, why is the judge a black guy? Why is that? Because he's the good judge or he's the good doctor. He's yeah. the good cop. All right. But can that guy be an ex-alcoholic that beats up his wife? Hold on a second. What are we saying? So that was those, there was a lot of that, a lot of that. for okay. years and years and years. But that tide has turned. Right. It's nicer now. So it's nice. And black actors and, 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 and BIPOC actors I just learned that term. Uh, are learning, <laughs> are learn, are getting roles, right. and that's that's really really great. Oh, it's um, really really great. I wanted to Finally. bring up um, that yeah. you were working with a friend of mine, Shamika Wright. Twice now. I'm gonna have her on the show soon, but oh, I love good. her. She's, She's a, the sweetest. Yes, yes, and she just uh, uh, played the um, hotel manager. Uh, I can't remember the character's name, but she bl- just played our Michelle hotel Green. Was it Michelle Green? I think Michelle, so. Yeah, maybe it was Michelle Green. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. You. She told you in I, in I, Danger I, in I Yosemite. Was, I saw it on her Instagram, but then okay. I like looked into it okay. on your IMDb, and I'm like, oh, she played Michelle Green. Okay. okay. Which I, I probably named her, her after <laughs> the actress Michelle Green, whom yeah. I did a film with, who's wonderful. But yeah, Shamika's terrific, and she was our lead in Secrets in the Building, which was formerly titled Killer Condo. Yeah. <laughs> Which I kind of like Killer Condo. But anyway, no. Secrets in the Building. I, I like your titles better. Who who renames these movies? I know. Yeah, I know. Your titles are good. Thank man. you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, anyway, some, you know, the network does. We had this one just coming out, just finished it. Uh, and it's about a, um, a written, written by Stephen Sirwinski, a uh, terrific young writer. And he uh, called it Haunted by My Stalker. And it's, you know, the, the premise is, is my stalker? Stalking me from beyond the grave, mm. right? So they, God. they, so we got the film done, and it's this spooky thing, and okay, great, and uh, it has been retitled to "Look Who's Stalking." Look who's stalking. Like the yes. like the kid movie, the baby. Like yeah, like <laughs> like the John Travolta <laughs> Kirstie Alley movie. Yes. So you, somebody, you, you remember "Look Who's Talking"? That the movie with the babies, the you baby, the baby starts them. to talk. Yeah. How old is it? Old. It's, it's old. I don't it's think old. so. Early nineties, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or maybe I have. Yeah, probably. Just I just can't remember. remember. Yeah. I would you just do. have to see it. I remember it. Yeah. yeah, it was like two or three of them, right? Yeah, there was "Look Who's Talking" two and three, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they changed it to that. Look who's stalking, Look who's stalking. and it's going to air on the twenty third. It's a good movie. I'm proud of the cast. Terrific lead. Alyssa Filaram was wonderful. Um, uh, 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 Juliana De Stefano's in it. She's great. Harley J's great. Everybody's great in it. 
The only thing is they change the title. I don't know where they get these titles. Somebody, somebody at the network is a, has a list of titles. They want to come up with something clever. It's like, okay, sure, great. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, whatever. It's, it's, it's not that clever, though. <laughs> you know, not... I know. Anyway, so you fight like hell, and then, you know, they come up with the title. We did one film uh, that was called High School Crush, which was about a teacher who, uh, she goes back to, she's a substitute teacher. She comes to school, and she's <laughs> kind of nuts, and she thinks she envisions herself as a student. Mm. And she, she forms a crush on one of her students. Wow. So it's called High School Crush. It was retitled Dirty Teacher. <sighs> so I smack my palm to my forehead and go, oh my God, you're calling it that? That sounds like a blue movie. Right, right. And it's like, no, no, that's the title of it. And they air it all the time. Wow. High School Crush it. would would have been better. One would think. But there's a salaciousness that they need with these titles to entice you to go watch it because we don't have names. Mm -hmm. You know, the best names that we have are like, oh, wait, that guy or that gal who was on that television show, which is now in reruns, you remember? Right, right. And your, some, your friend goes, no, I never saw the show. That's the names we can afford right. or used to be able to afford. Now we don't even go there. So the titles have to have some sort of cachet or some sort of sizzle interest to make you watch it. Otherwise, you know, you're okay. not going to watch it. So that's why I, I understand why they changed the title. Or why they why they come up with these titles that are a little bit you know mm. greasy. My, my my son watches. Uh, well, he used to watch a lot of Lifetime movies, and we used to just laugh all the time at the titles because they were just so. I know ridiculous. obvious they are, and they obvious are. too. They make it really. But obvious. I guess oh, yeah. that's what pulls you in. It's yeah. Like oh my god, this that's what they so do. Damn stupid. It's like right on point. Let me, let me watch this. Yeah. Let me watch this dumb shit. Yeah. 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 That's what they do. Wow. That's what they do. I think I've watched like every Lifetime movie. I grew up watching Lifetime movies with my mom. I'm so sorry about that. Are you okay? <laughs> No, I'm serious. No, I'm. Uh, that's very nice. Of I'm you. not gonna God lie. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Know you know what? Thank it's you. Taught me a lot. P I hope not. No, no, what no. What has no. it taught you? Just don't, don't trust men. Just, a. Sorry, sorry, Mash. What else? Don't trust men. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Ever. There's a lot of perverts in the world. Yes. <laughs> don't trust your doctor. Don't trust your doctor. <laughs> just, <laughs> No, no, no. Don't do don't that. Just trust your doctor. Always just be, you know, just, just I don't know. It just, you got to be, take care of yourself gotta out be, in this gotta, world. Gotta you know, be you cautious. Got to be cautious. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. But it teaches you about life, like what can happen. And it does happen. Like these young teachers, you know, they do, you know. Do strange things, yeah. Do strange you things. Know. You have a lot of different things that happen in this world right now, you know, so, uh if it that's a good a thing, then that's the thing. That's the yeah. question. I think, you know, it's funny. Hey, I got to make a living, so I'll do it. Yeah. I, but, but, <laughs> and I, you know, and I enjoy making a thriller. But you're interesting that you say that. Yeah. Because what you're saying is the overall sociological impact of these is paranoia. Right. It's like, let's, let's just, let's just cultivate more fear. Right. And that's, that's what sense, it feels like for real. Yeah. And that's kind of sad about. in a way. It, it is. Yeah. Um, it, when, it, when, when the mission, Actually, is empowerment right? The mission is female empowerment. I got it from. I got empowerment from that. I hope we tried. I that. did because obviously <laughs> I'm not, you know, um, crazy or anything, right? From yeah. watching these these thrillers, are you? But I mean, I don't think so. Right, but you a little crazy. It just made me more aware too. You know, it's just I don't know. Yeah. I think it taught me a lot. Well, that's it good. did. That's good. Yeah, in, in whatever form. Yeah, in whatever, in whatever form. form. <laughs> in whatever form. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these cheerleader movies are funny. I've done a couple of those, and it's always like, I want to be head cheerleader. And yes, like, it's true. I know. I really Who don't. wants to be the captain, co-captain, and the co-captain's upset because they want to be the captain. It's just, it's just I mean, yeah. I was a cheerleader. No, oh, it's so, true. Was there that kind of It was rivalry? drama. It was yeah. crazy because I did cheerleading and I did basketball. And um, so when I cheered, I really wasn't friends with my cheerleading friends. We were like acquaintances, uh -huh. but my friends were on the basketball team. Okay. Yeah, so it's like that in cheer. Like, it's just drama. Everyone's in competition. Yeah. You never know who's really your friend. Really? Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. That's interesting. And, yeah. and it's like that across the board. Yeah, it is. There yeah. isn't, like, camaraderie and no. sisterly love or yeah. anything like that. No, it's always yeah. conflict-driven. Well, yeah. that's why we make movies about yeah. these damn cheerleaders, exactly. don't we? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, there you I go. I can relate. Yeah. yeah. So, Doug, what has been, because most of the movies we're talking about are on Lifetime, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What has been your favorite Lifetime movie? That Ooh. You, that I've had a chance to that make? you've made, yeah. Oh, and I'm going to watch it tonight, too. Well, I've done a couple <laughs> that, I'm, that, I'm, that I'm very happy with. I'm very happy with The Surrogate, uh, oh, which yeah. starred uh, Cameron Matheson and Annie Wershing, 
whom we just lost tragically. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, Rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I also enjoyed uh, My Daughter's Ransom. That was fun because I didn't write that to be a lifetime movie. I just, I wrote that just as a, as a spec script that we were going to shoot in San Francisco at the film school. And that's a story about a woman whose daughter gets kidnapped and the bad guy uh, says, you know, calls the mom and, the, and, and says, go to this trash can at the zoo. And she goes behind the trash can and there's a hat in there with cameras and there's an earpiece. And he says, okay, I control you now. And he sends her around the city to screw up her life, to go make her um, divorce her husband, to make her go do this, to make her go do this, to make her rob money. And he's controlling her. And it's a lot of fun. And it's all, it's just you this side. You wrote this. Uh-huh. Wrote and directed. And just this side of comedy. And I wrote and directed The Surrogate as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I like those two. Those are some favorites. And I liked Sugar Daddies. I didn't write it. Barbara Kim, Kim Licka wrote mm-hmm. that. I like how that came out because that was a woman, about, that was a story about a woman who is making a decision, should I become uh, a sugar baby or not? Should I go into that lifestyle or not? Mm. And uh, it was nice to work with the actress because Taylor... Uh, Taylor Black, I believe, uh, I think that was her last name. Uh, she, she, um, she took that direction. Just every, I said to her, every time you have uh, a decision to make, I said, take your moment, take your moment, take your time, and make that decision. And right. we, as the audience, will watch you decide, and we'll be fascinated by that. Mm. And she did throughout the whole movie. So it's an it's an interesting uh, sort of. Uh, 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 you know, character character exploration of this woman making a choice with her life, you know, and it's fun. Th- yeah. Those were fun to do. So yeah. those are the ones I like. Uh, there's a couple of, oh, uh, uh, Stalk by My Neighbor is a whole lot of fun because that's our homage to Rear Window mm. where Kelsey Stranahan, uh, who I've worked with several times and I love her, she's a sister. Mm-hmm. She uh, plays the, the neighbor girl who witnesses what she thinks is a murder and it was, you know, our homage to Rear Window. Mm-hmm. And then we did another one, which is another homage to uh, North by Northwest called um, Dead- Deadly Mile High Club. And that was, that's about a crazy uh, uh, f- uh, flight instructor. So that was I a lot of fun. I feel like I've seen all of them. <laughs> you might have. Anyway. I feel like I have, yeah. yeah. You might have, yeah. Anyway, they're Storyline f- sounds very familiar. Yeah. All they're those storylines. F- they're fun to make. And, yeah. And, you know, I, I, people go... You know, we get one or two responses, you know, when I tell them I make these movies. First response is, why would you ever, seriously, Doug, why do you even, (laughs) why are you doing that? And then the other response is what you said, Uh is that I watched them with my mom Mm -hmm. and I love them and I learned a lot from them. Or the woman at Supercuts with tears in her eyes who says, oh my God, I love that film. Yeah. I just love that film. I said, well, yeah, that was my film. You want to take a little more? (laughs) And, and, you know. What makes you come up with these Crazy stories. Yeah. What What is your inspiration? Because most people write from inspiration. Where does it right? come from? Like, where is your inspiration <laughs> coming from? Like, yeah. what have you lived to Doug's come up with that house weird stuff? Or- <laughs> well, first of all, please know that the a lot of the uh, not all, but I would say mm, 80 percent of the scripts that I've written for these movies for this venue, they've been. Some they've been the executive producers' pitch that they said, "Okay, we've got this one pager that we've developed. We want you to write it and direct it." And I read the one pager, which is a little synopsis of what the thing is, a little log line, and it's like, "Okay, I would have never come up with that, right. but I will now dive into that." And like an actor does, you interpret it and yeah. you build it and stuff right. like that. But you know, you, you just like an actor does. You dig into your personal life mm-hmm. and you access your characters however you can. I sit down with my characters uh, and I do what my teacher taught me to do 40 years ago. I sit down and I interview my characters mm. and I ask my character, what do you want? Why do you want it? What's your arc? Why do you arc? You know, uh, what do you need? Uh, why do you need it? And if you don't get it, what are the dire ramifications if you don't get it? Mm. And I get into these people. And of course, when you start to interview your characters, you go a little nuts mm-hmm. and you look at the, the empty chair next to you and you're interviewing that character and that character starts to talk back to you. And then lo and behold, you realize you're talking to this, you know, dark, was, dark I was, recesses. I was of gonna what's going to ask you, who are your, your characters? <laughs> they're si- they're, they're the people question. in my life. They're, they're people in my life. They're me. Mm-hmm. Most of them are a version of me. Like I got to do a, a, 
was blessed to do three Stock by My Doctor films. Yeah. Mm. And that's about an old doctor. With Eric Roberts, right? With Eric Roberts. That's about an old doctor who obsesses and falls in love with a young girl. That's an 18 crazy. year old girl. Mm-hmm. It's crazy and it's mm-hmm. sick and it's twisted. And it happens. Mm-hmm. And it happens. So, what did I do? Oh my gosh, you go into those dark, bizarre recesses of your mind and you get to play the villain. Mm-hmm. And you get to say, now what would I do if that uh, was that villain? How can I justify that in my world? Right. And just like an actor has to, you know, an actor has to do that. Yeah. And that, an actor doesn't pick up a villain role and go, well, I don't believe this guy. You know, the actor goes, no, 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 he's, he, he or she has a very, very important reason to do, for doing what they do. Mm-hmm. You usually access your own life. Right. So it's the same sort of process yeah. as, as an actor would do. And that's how, you, that's how you get characters. And I think if you don't do the characters and you've done your plot, guess what? You haven't done your plot yet. Mm. Sorry. You got, you know, it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg, right? But you gotta, you got to definitely know those characters before you start outlining your plot. Mm. And so I always come from that, you know, do a little bit of plot work, get a rough idea of it. Now let's sit down and talk to these people. What do they want to do? How would they play it? And, you know, right now I'm, I'm uh, writing and then I will direct a movie called My Son, My Obsession. Mm-hmm. It's about a helicopter mom. Wow. They hired the right guy. Yeah. I had the, I, I had a wonderful mom who would have given the shirt off her back to you, but my God, was she a pain in the ass sometimes. <laughs> and, and a lovable pain in the ass. And uh, I can access her. Right. So yeah. she's a wealth of, of material. Thanks, mom, wherever you are right now. You know, and you, you access the people and the situations mm-hmm. in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you, I don't look at these movies as... I honestly don't look at these movies as as other people will look at them as whatever trite, stupid Lifetime movies. Right. I can't do that. I right. can't get into a screenplay unless I completely believe that character. And what's funny is you get judged on the title and you get judged on other movies that are on that channel that other filmmakers will make, whose names will go unsaid, mm-hmm. that don't give a shit. Mm. I give a shit. Yeah. I care about these people and I care about these plots and we're trying to make the best movies we possibly can. So I've had people tell me, oh yeah, I've seen the movies that you do. And I go, yeah, which ones? And they go, well, you know, I've seen those movies on that channel. I go, yeah, I do like whatever, 10% that are on that channel. Right. Mm. I don't do the other 90%. Why don't you watch mine? Mm. Anyway, I, I lose that battle because nobody has the time. They, they don't want to. So what, what I'm saying is you take, it, you take it just as seriously and you don't phone it in. By the way, actor story for you. Mm. Back in the day, when actors would come in the room <laughs> and audition, right, right. I remember having the camcorder in my hand, and I'm filming the actress perform the scene, and she came in to play the villain, and she was doing her best imitation of Joan Collins from Dynasty, hmm. and it was derivative, it was unfounded, mm-hmm. it was stupid, it was bullshit, hmm. and. I didn't do this, but I really wanted to stop the camera and pull this, this actress aside and said, do me a favor. Go outside. Read the story. Believe in that character. Mm-hmm. Memorize her lines. And come back and believe your situation. Yeah. Because what is acting, right? Right. What's the, what's the phrase? Uh, 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 I'm going to get it wrong. Living truthfully. Yes. under imaginary circumstances. Yes. Mm. She just wasn't living truthfully. Yes. And I wanted to stop her and go, why are you here? Why are you wasting my <laughs> right. time? You, you don't believe this. <laughs> right. I believe it. Yeah. I want that character to believe it. So the great actress will come in there, no matter how silly the part is, yeah. right. and they'll go, oh my gosh, yes, I'm Kylo Ren, and I'm on Star Wars, and I'm looking across. It's impossible. I'm seeing my sister on another planet a, right. a billion light years away, but I'm going to see her. They commit, goddammit. Yeah. They commit. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go, okay, now that's drama. So I'll commit to these things. Right. So I don't look at them as trite. Right, so right. when you ask me, well, how did you get those ideas? It's right. like, you're kind of going, well, how'd you, why would you come up with those stupid ideas? Like, I kind of think they're good ideas. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because right, right. I have to. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Because we have to. You got to right. believe in it. You got to believe in it, yeah. even if it's weird. So yeah. people who are doing, you know, Sharknado, well, they better believe in that Sharknado. Right, right, right. <laughs> they better. Right, right. You know, And commit to it, goddammit. So otherwise, hey, don't. They, they don't committed do to like seven of them, right? They did. They did. But you got to, you know, you got to yeah. commit to it. Doug, if, have, have you ever decided to be like an acting coach or do you do any acting classes? I do. I teach acting for film, but I will not, I will not pretend to think that I'm an actor, acting coach. Hmm. That's a different gig. I'm a film director and I help actors 
get a film performance. Mm -hmm. And some of the young actors that we're working with now, because these are you know small budget and mm -hmm. non SAG, I'll get a I'll, like I had an actress on this last film. It was her first film ever, mm -hmm. like not movie like ever in front of a camera. Wow, she was terrific. Yeah, I, I would have never known. We booked her, and she was terrific. Yeah. So so sometimes I'll get to do a little bit of that acting for film coaching, mm -hmm. but I'm not the kind of guy who is an acting acting coach. That's mm -hmm. a different job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found that, and I learned this from Gil Dennis, my favorite screenwriting teacher at, at Cal Arts. You need four things to get great acting in a film. Number one, you got to get a script that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Number two, you got to put together a, uh, a an environment and a crew where it's conducive and happy and a wonderful place to work. Um, uh, you cast the best actors in town. That's number three, and you do a good audition. And then number four, the most important thing that a director can do after you've done those first three things is to shut up. Let the people work. Shut <laughs> up. Let those great actors in that simple screenplay that makes sense mm -hmm. do their thing. Get out of their way. Right. Now, if the script needs massive amounts inter of interpretation, if you're doing some sort of you know, bizarre science fiction period piece thing that people go, what's a thingy thingy? You know, you got to explain what it is. Okay, good. There's some explanation to be done. But I come from the school of thought of get a script that makes sense, get great actors, create a nice environment, and then support them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and audition well. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you know, audition well. Audition a lot and audition well. Get a great casting director. And then you don't have to, you shouldn't have to talk too much. That's my ethic. Yeah. Some acting coaches will talk a lot. Yeah. A lot. And you go, okay. <laughs> I got yeah. it. Right. I shut up already. Let the actor do it. Mm -hmm. So. Very Doug, let, me, true. let me ask you this. Have you, is there like, is there like a film that you have that's like, you, you, you have it, it's written that, that you really want to pursue? You know, it's funny, that's the question that, that when, my, when my agent would send me out, my manager would send me out to these offices, they'd, yeah. they'd ask me that question. I'd go, I don't have a script in the drawer because everything I write these days gets made or I get hired to write. Right. So I don't. I have something I've outlined, but it's not done yet. Okay. And it's, a, it's sort of this personal bizarre story about you know, a guy not unlike yourself, Doug, who, who, who runs into trouble, and I won't bore you with the story. But anyway... So, so the answer is yes, and the answer is no. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there isn't the. This is the other thing I was going to say. I'm there's two. There, I think this is my personal opinion. There's two. There's two businesses. There's the. I got a script, and I want to make it into a movie business. Business. Right. Right. And that's most of our business. Right. Right. You got an idea for a movie, you want to make it, and then there is the. We as executive producers know what we want to make. We want to make Marvel movies, or we want to make Lifetime movies. Right, you know, the right. top end of the scale, and then the bottom, 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 right. as far as budget goes. They know what they want. I'm in the latter. I'm an order filler. Hmm. I'm an order filler. Hmm. Somebody says, we need a movie about XYZ hmm. subject. I say, okay, let's apply everything we know about the craft to make that film. And people who make these Marvel movies, they do the same damn thing. Right, hmm. right. They have to go, all right, they want a movie about... This guy with a hammer who flies through the air. All right, what do we do? All right, come on. You <laughs> exactly. know, beginning, middle, and end. You know, character backstory, blah blah. They got to build all that stuff too. Yeah. Did they come up with it? No. Do they want to make a movie about Thor? Probably no. not. Right, right. But they're getting paid so much money, they got to say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm in the order filling business, and I'm happy to be there because the other business, the I got a script business, and I want to make it. You can talk about that script and trying to get it made and trying to get it financed. Five, six, seven years go yeah. by. Right. I am happy that in February of this year, a script landed on our desk that had to be entirely rewritten for various and sundry reasons. I rewrote it in three weeks. Three weeks later, we were shooting it. We are now locking picture on it. It will be on TV in September. Mm. So, I like the fact that we make them quickly and get them done. Get them yes. I like the fact that three weeks ago, I wrote that scene, and now I'm on a set, and these actors are performing that dialogue. Mm. And I either 
my, either my chest swells with pride at how wonderfully well-written that dialogue is, <laughs> or I go, hang on, guys, i got to do a little quick rewrite here because that doesn't work. <laughs> so either way, it's, it's a wonderful experience. Right. Rather than, yeah, I wrote this seven years ago, and uh, I hope we can make it someday. Right, yeah. right. I don't want to be in that business anymore. Mm. Yeah. I, I was, and I, I, it, I don't want to talk about it. I want to do it. So that yeah. I'm happy I'm there. I'm yeah. happy I'm doing this now. Now, now what, what is so, well, not what is so right. wrong with it, but what doesn't like entice you to, to that side of the business? Oh, to do that other side of the yeah. Just simply because you're going to be talking about it more than you will be um, doing it. And, you're, and the other thing, too, is it's the business side of it. And Orson Welles talks about this. Talk to Orson Welles. <laughs> he, he talked about it, how he got out of the business because, you know he was, right? He got out of the business because uh, the deal-making. They've right. written books about it, how it was so tough for him. You've got to go get, you've got to convince people who you don't even know, right? Right. <laughs> to give you a boatload of money to make your movie, and you've got to go get whatever that name director, that name actor, uh, that financing source to say yes. Yeah. <coughs> you got to get all this stuff in order to you know, leap through hoops to prove to somebody over there at some company that you don't know, for them to say yes, da 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 You know, all this kind of, it's yeah. just, it's, you know what we do is, is I have the executive producers who go, okay, we want to make, make this movie. And they go, can you write it? And I go, yeah. And then we write it. And they go, okay, we'll put the money in the bank. Okay, great. Now the money's in the bank. Great. Wow. Now let's go make offers. To, let's go. Let's go find. A, let's go find a right, cast. Find let's a, go yeah. find locations. Great. Let's That's go shoot. Difference. That's the difference. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. Now, sure, these movies, you know, are are, are always going to be double A baseball, right? <laughs> Triple A baseball. Well, they're never they're never going to be the major leagues, right? Yeah. Right. But at least I get to get up and do it. Right. At least right. I get to get up in the morning and go do it, right. as opposed to sitting around waiting for it to happen. Yeah. Forever and ever and ever, which we all know that business. And I, I, I'm glad I'm not in that business anymore. Yeah. I really, I really am. I, w- I thought, eh, do I want to get stuck here? I didn't choose this. This sort of chose me. Right. And then I, fe- I, I realized I like stories about women, and I like working with women, and I like mm-hmm. I was raised by women, and I like these stories. And um, you know, I I write a pretty good female character, even though I am a male. You know, I got fired for being a male. <laughs> you got fired. What? I got fired off a show for being male. No, you didn't. Okay, I didn't. You could have sued. Okay, I did it. I could have sued. <laughs> no sued. way. I could have sued. I did not sue. But I did get fired for being male. And it was not even hidden. It was just up front, we're replacing you with a female director. Oh, my goodness. Period. I had a contract and everything. Hell, yeah. You're looking at me with the did, big did eyes. Did they pay yeah. you out? I got paid for the work that I did on the, on the rewrite of the screenplay. Yeah. But I got fired off of that job for being male. Wow. wow. Yeah. Now, good for her. She's working, and I'm happy that women yeah. are getting... I'm happy about right. that. Right. And I got work. That's, that's cool. It's all good. And I love the people who fired me, and I Aww. still work with them. <laughs> yeah. But I did get fired by a, a, an unsaid network for being male. Mm. Because that's our game these days. So, mm-hmm. you know. But anyway, so yeah, I like writing, I like writing female characters because I grew up with women. Right. You know? So, anyway. Love it. So, anyway. But I shouldn't because I'm, you know, I'm a male. I shouldn't be writing female characters. <laughs> only, only women can write female characters, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. You know, whatever. Whatever. So you get this stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. This stuff. We won't go into that. It's negative shit. But anyway, it's all good. It's all positive. And I'm glad people are getting work. And I'm glad right. that they're opening more doors for women. For women, right. And people of color. It's wonderful that more people are getting the opportunity to do it. Yeah. It's really, really great. And I happen to be a Caucasian white guy. So I'm in trouble. <laughs> anyway. anyway. I thought you were Italian. I'm not Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's the answer to your question. Thank you for letting me ramble. No, no, that's cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. How about you? What? What? Uh, you, you got the film festival going? Oh, man, this ain't about me, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, but I love Doug. how Doug brought up the film festival. No, yeah. um, that's amazing. Yeah. So we we, really we, we just it. completed our second year. Nice. Um, at the Regal LA Live, um, mm-hmm. it was good. We screened over forty projects, I nice. think. Yeah, so short films, uh, features, documentaries, mm-hmm. um, did a whole award show and everything. It was it was really nice, That's man. Cool. It was really nice. So we're just gearing up for next year, um, trying to make it bigger and better. More um, days. And what do the, people submit your film their films from yeah. anywhere or yeah, we we get take- films from all across the world. Yes. So it's an international film festival. So we take films from 
all across the world. Um, we have like like fourteen different categories, like actor, best director, best um, actress, things like that, best feature film, best short film. Nice. Um, so yeah, we we get a lot of submissions, um, and I'll bet you you see some really great stuff. We we yes. had some really good films this year. Like the the first year, the first year we had some really cool stuff as well. But this past year, I mean, like, like I think like ninety five percent of them were just like really, really, really good. good. Yeah, really, really good. So, um, it's a lot of talented people out there. Yeah. So, you know, we we just trying to um, you know build up a platform to get more independent filmmakers some looks. That's yeah. nice. Um, we have one uh, filmmaker that won the first year. Um, we're trying to get her. We, we're in that business that you don't want to be in anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, trying to go to a production company and get funding for a horror film that she's doing. So yeah. um, Now, if that business shows up and it's easier, I'll say yes. I'm no <laughs> fool. I'm no fool. It's just hard. No, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, no, it's, it's very difficult. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the guy came up to me and he's like, you know, we need this, this, and this. And I'm like, okay, so... I'm like, man, I'm trying to think of some filmmakers I could call. Mm-hmm. So I, I call her. I'm like, hey, you got this? She's like, yeah. I what are like, they at? What If you don't want to do well, it on the well, air, no, no, what no, are they no. asking for? No, they, they ask for a horror. They ask for a horror film. Horror screenplay, are they asking for, uh, do you have half the funds? The script, a uh-huh. deck, and a budget. Okay. Script, deck, and budget. So okay. they ask well, for that's script. That's standard. Yeah, yeah, that's standard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, <laughs> so we go in, so I call her. And I'm like, hey, but I need, you know, I need, I need the script. Like, she's like, I got the script. I just finished the script. I'm like, cool. I was like, I need a, um, a deck and a budget. She was like, okay, I, I'll get it to you uh, tomorrow. I was like, okay, for sure. She gave it to me the same night, right? Wow. So, so I got wow. all three of them, right? So wow. I sent them in to my guy, and I'm like, hey, here it is, boom. Yeah. yeah. So he takes it, sends it to his guy. We actually have a meeting. We go up there. Uh, we talk about it with with one of the heads. And then the other head, he was stuck in a meeting all day, so we didn't get to talk to him. So, and he's the guy that makes the final decision. Yeah. So a um, couple of days go by. We're like, hey, what's going on? He's like, uh, you need cast commitments. I was like, uh-huh. cast commitments? And then, then they'll say, now do you have half the money? Right. right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah. so we, we, it took us about two or three weeks with the director. She, she has some... Some friends in some high places, so we actually got uh, three cast commitments, some letter of intent from um, some really, some really good actors that you know got some stuff under their belt. Mm-hmm. So um, we sent that in last week, and it's um, a horror film. It's a horror film, and they want to see. That's the thing. They, it's a horror film, and they need cast commitments. Right. <laughs> well, when's the last time you went to a horror film? Because you went, oh my gosh, you know Tom Hanks is doing this horror. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's a it horror film. Make sense. Right. You're not supposed to. Ha- right. it's, it's not supposed to matter. It doesn't make sense. It does, it's not so supposed true. to matter. No. That right. That's why you do a horror and film. And so and you can put anybody in it. And that's what yeah. the director was saying. She was thank like, you. She was like, really? Like, yeah. That's see. That, I was like, is this what he said he needed? So, yeah. yeah. But mm. uh, luck, luckily, we got it. Um, you know, the the actors that read the script, they really liked it. Good. Um, so. Good. You know, it's it's we we sent it in last week, nice. and um, now we're just you know you wait. waiting to hear back. Yeah. Yeah, but everything was good. He said everything was good, so just gotta wait to hear back from the head man. And that, you know, th- and that could say, you know, a month, two months, three months. Yeah, one never knows. Yeah, exactly. it's a, they, they have a whole process, so right. it's like a two, three month process. Sure. How do you handle that? Does should Maj like continue to follow up, or how does that work? Give them their space. Like, I mean, how they does that they, work? they gave they gave me the outline of how long it takes. Okay. So I'm not gonna. The only thing I did was follow up just to make sure that it was turned in. And yeah. right. I was like, yeah, yeah, turned it in to them, everything. Okay. Yeah. That was cool. So, I mean, their process is like, I think it's yeah. like eight to 12 weeks I know. for something, their okay. vetting process and all this other stuff. And You know, it's funny you mentioned that because it just reminded me of a gentleman whose name will remain unmentionable, <laughs> whom I met years ago. Uh, we are actually the exact same age. And... I met him when I was 27, and he had just finished making a feature film at USC while he was at USC. Wow. Oh, wow. And he was this producer. And, he, and he, he, he was like one of these guys. Hey, hey, Veronica, let's go. Man, we got to go. Get the script. Get the script. He was yeah. like, this guy was like, whoa, relax. That sounds like Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> relax. Well, well, ironically, he's one of the only people that Quentin Tarantino legendarily punched out. Shit. This guy got movies made. 
obnoxious, I won't mention his name, mm -hmm. obnoxious, pushy, impatient, in your face, let's go, let's go, wow. let's go, let's wow. make the film, let's, come on, come on, come yeah. on. This kind of a guy, that guy got movies made. Wow. Big yeah. movies, huge movies. So it's good. With, can, can, you, can, can you tell us one of the names of the movies? Like good no, and bad? Then you know who it is. <laughs> no, no. no, but so, so you know what I'm saying? So I'm, yeah. there is a part of that when you say, well, should you ask against, like, you know what? Life's short. Uh, I'm not that guy. Right. I'm not pushy. Yeah. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible networker. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> but if you do, if you are going to be in that business, I think, of pushing projects through. Yeah. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, as they say, right? So, you know. Close mouth, push. don't get fed. Right. There you have it. So push, push. You yeah. Know, you know, you want to be, you want to work with people, but at the same time, you know. Also, have a number of irons in the fire. I think if, yeah. you, if you just set yourself up with one project, if you're really producing and you're one of these types of producers, most of the people that I know that are doing that who have had any success at all, they have a number of different projects. Mm -hmm. They're always reading something, mm -hmm. always reading something, always packaging something. And they might have just a lot of stuff and they just have a lot of irons in the fire and, yeah. and they live in that world. They live in that world and, and they get stuff done eventually and they do. Yeah. And I tell you, you know, producers might have a bad name. In that side of the business, they'll go years, years, if not decades, not making a dime and having to be the driving force behind it. So wow. when they come in, and they make a bunch of money out right. of the budget for it's not they're not getting paid like you know your day rate as a sound right. engineer they're getting paid for the years and years and years it took to get that project there wow. so mm. that's that i think it's fair that they get a little bit of money yeah. <laughs> when the time happens for right, them so, right right uh, yeah the, the anyway. what what are the budgets on on your movies that you uh, I'm not allowed to talk about that okay but let's <laughs> no, just say closing. let's just say that when you're done with that popcorn i could probably use it for the crew <laughs> They're low. They're low. They're low. Lower. They're low. That low. They're low. You need this popcorn low. Yeah, that low. No, they're not that low, but they're low. <laughs> they're low. They're low. They're, let's put it this way: we do them as expeditiously as we possibly can, <laughs> yeah. and it's not. It, it's not necessarily, um, from what I understand, from what I've been told, uh, it's simply what the market will bear. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like if you're going to produce a movie. And you're going to sell it to XYZ venue, cable channel, or a Hulu, or a blah, blah. Right. What are they going to pay you to license it? What are they going to pay? Right, right. Yeah. You think right. they're going to bank? Oh, yeah, sure. Here's $5 million for right, that, right. that little movie no, that you no. made. No, uh-uh. Yeah. They're going to license it for as little as they can, for yeah. as long as they can. Mm -hmm. And you might not be looking at, you know, you might not be looking at very much at all. So you got to ask yourself, okay, how do you live to fight another day? You live to fight another day in this world that I'm in by keeping the budgets at a rate where the executive producers can come back and finance you again and finance you again. If you, if a lot of people make, make movies and they go, we're going to spend it all on this one. We're going to Vegas. We're putting $20,000 on black 22 and we're just going to go for it guys. It's going to be the one. And guess what? No, we don't do that. We put a little bit of money and we make a little bit more back and then we make it and then we do it again and then we do it again and then we mm -hmm. do it again. Mm -hmm. We're in the business of staying in business. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they are made for a price. And that's the other thing that keeps me working is that I will figure out a inexpensive way to get the same scene done as opposed to, you know, being the, whatever, the auteur who says, no, 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 those curtains must be authentic mm -hmm. and we have to change all the curtains in this house before I can even walk in here and think about <laughs> shooting the shot. Right. No, you know, you, you do it things on a low budget right. and you've got to think that way and, and yeah. think smartly, but you got to do things for a price. Mm -hmm. And so we do. So let me, let me, so, so they're low, but they're not, People get paid, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're well taken care of. Right. Okay. They're fun. I'll tell you one thing. I'm, the, the thing that I'm most proud of is I'm working right now with, with a producer by the name of Nicole Layson, Nikki Layson. And she and I have a wonderful, wonderful operation going on. Our sets are so happy. Yeah. Mm. They're happy sets. You were there. I was there. They're happy sets. Food is delicious, Eat. too. Food was great. We got a yeah. great caterer. We love our crew. We keep their hours to you know the industry standard. Uh, we take... as good a care of our actors as yeah. we can and we've got our ducks in a row and we're organized and that's the best thing you can do for your crews. For the, right. for the young filmmakers out there who are listening, if you guys give a shit, the best thing you can do for your cast and crew, be organized. Mm. Have your shot plan ready, directors. Know where you're going to put the camera in advance. Show that crew that you've thought about this before they arrived 
and they will kill for you. Yeah. Mm. They will love you to death if you do that. So mm. that, I make it a rule. I show up every day as prepared as I can possibly be. And, uh, you know, it's a happy set if you are. So that's what I'm proud of. We create a wonderful environment, and I do not have stress-free sets. A couple movies ago, we cast an actor whose name will go unmentioned. Mm -hmm. I realized as we were about to walk into production, this guy was going to be a problem. Yeah. And I said, I can't have this personality on our set. Yeah. Fired him. Sure. We had to pay him, yeah. but we fired him. Because I said, I cannot have that personality on set. I'm sorry. Our precious little environment where the actors feel safe and the crew feels loved right. is more important than anything else. Right. So that's the world that I work in. And I I'm, I'm love working in that world. Right. As opposed to, say... In the tension-filled sets where everybody's like, well, what's that guy thinking about me right now? What are they doing over there? No, the paranoia stuff. Right. I don't, I don't yeah. want to work there. I don't want to right. work there. Anyway, mm. What are you asking? Something. No, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. um, oh, my God, I forgot my question. Um, so do you, do you work for a production company that makes films for Lifetime, or do you work for Lifetime? I work for the former. I work for a number of production companies who have, have – they have handshake agreements – Okay. They don't have. They don't have necessarily. It's a real draconian world right now, yeah. where where they basically have handshake agreements, and at any one time, uh, uh, a Lifetime Network or a Tubi or whomever okay. can say, "Nope, we're not interested in that movie." Yeah. Mm. So basically, the 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 executive producers I work for, I love dearly. They are brave people. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful, brave people who every time out, they are taking a gamble on this movie and they're trusting me with that gamble because uh -huh. they could turn around, make that movie and their, ven their, their venues, their buyers yeah. could say, no, thank you. Right. And they're out that money. So, oh, so every so they time they don't get assurances beforehand, before they make the movie, they, they get a hand, they get a, they get a handshake show it to me when you're done. Mm. And that's as good as they can get. That's as good as they can, get. As good as they can get. Wow. Show it to us when you're done. We like you. We like that, that story concept. Show it to us when we're done. They may turn around and go, mm -mm, that didn't work. And that can happen. Has it ever happened to me? Not would, no. But it can. And that, so, so it's weird. It's, it's a safer world in the fact yeah. that we get the work. But if we don't deliver. Right, right. It could be tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you can go, you know, we have to, my first edits, I deliver my director's cut 86 minutes. 30 seconds long to the frame. Mm. I don't deliver them a 105 minute movie. Mm. I don't deliver them a 70 minute movie. Mm. I deliver to them the time that they want to put on the air, 86 minutes and 30 seconds. And I don't care if there's this wonderful scene that you love so much or there's this something. <laughs> I got to get it down to 86 minutes down. and 30 yeah. seconds. That's what we do. And right. that's television. Yeah. And you can bet there's a lot of performances that go on in television all the time that hit the, hit the editing room floor. You never see them. Actor pours out their heart. Sorry, there's no time for it. Wow. No one's ever going to see wow. it. And it's a heartbreaker. But you've got, you got to deliver. And so we deliver. Now, independent filmmaker goes, no, I have to make my vision. Yeah. And I'll do it my way. Mm. And they, they go, well, hold on a second. Somebody has to buy this at the end of the day. Right, right. Why don't you talk to them before you sell it? Right. Why don't you talk to them before you, you, you spend the money to go do it? Like you guys are doing, you're talking to an entity first right. to see if they'll like the project mm. first before you go forward. That's smart. Because yeah. at the end of the day, they're going to, they're going to look at it. Now, I've done a couple movies, th three, in fact, that were absolutely 100% spec movies. We did them. I paid for them or, or co-paid for them and uh, took them to market and uh, roll of the dice if anybody likes them. Did anybody like them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> two, two, two out of three found distribution. The nice. third one, which is my favorite, you can rent it on Vimeo On Demand nice. for $4.99, people. It's called The Hammer, and it stars Michael Madsen from Res Reservoir Dogs. Oh, okay. You can go there right now. If you go to Vimeo On Demand, go to The Hammer, and you can rent $4.99, and that'll help me pay for the movie. Yeah. But I made that all with my own money. And wow. uh, anyway, so, you, you know, every once in a while. Yeah. So, but you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a gamble, but it's a calculated gamble. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. So, definitely. like, if you're going to go make a horror film, and they say, well, get us names to be in the horror film, makes no goddamn sense right. at all. Okay, great. You're gonna go get some names for it. You got a horror film. They know that they can sell a horror film. You're not doing, you know, two guys look at their belly button, decide to, you know, and, and wonder about life, and hopefully somebody's gonna go watch the movie. Right. You're doing a genre picture. Horror films make money. Right. They they feel safer. 
sadly, that's our business is that they want to they want to be able to put butts in the chair or these days, you know, stream it. So, you know, you got to. Now, now how, do, how do you feel about um, like streaming? It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's changing the whole game thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, because yeah. people aren't getting paid the the way that they usually get paid, right, for streaming. I mean, how do you feel about it? Well, I'm I'm neither WGA or DGA and probably to my detriment, but then again, I'm able Wait, to. Wait, you say you are not? I am not. But I, I work a lot. Why not? Because I work a lot. Yeah. Do you see? Whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> please, if please, I was please D, explain. If I was DGA, I'd have to say no to all these projects that come to yeah. me. Really? If I was WGA, I'd have to say no to all these projects. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. sure. Because these budgets can't afford to pay DGA oh. rate or WGA rate. Now, that's to my so, detriment. So everything is non-union that you do. Everything that I've done has been non-WGA and non-DGA. Have okay. we been IATSE at one point? Yes, I've done a couple of IATSE shows. Or, yeah, I did one or two. And then uh, SAG, we were SAG up until, say, 2017. We were always doing SAG. Mm. And then we started do, you know, regularly doing non-SAG work. Wow. Which is, you know. What do you like better? Uh, th- they have... Ups and downs on both sides. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The ups for SAG, of course, is you have a uh, larger talent pool of people that have a lot of experience and terrific credits. Right. And and that. The downside is, of course, that SAG, God love, God love them, and, and I was good friends with one of the ex-presidents of SAG, uh, and I say that with a smile on my face and a valentine in my heart. Uh, <laughs> they make it hard. They make it hard for us to be in business because mm. because we're we, like I just told you every every movie that we make is a crapshoot. Yeah. They go no, that's bullshit. You guys are making TV movies. You need to pay the TV movie rate. It's like we can't pay the TV movie rate because we don't have the budget for it. Mm. Well, then why are you why are you movies always getting on television? Because we know what we're doing and we know what the buyer wants. Do they does the buyer pay for the movie? No, they don't. Bullshit! You guys are making a TV movie. So there's this whole acrimonious mm. thing between SAG and the movies that we do. Well, you said you said the they don't buy the movies. The the people, the, the Lifetime Channel and 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 Tubi and pe- people like that, they don't pay for the films. The executive producers pay for the films. Uh, they finance the film. So right. don't be surprised if this guy that you're talking to comes right. to you and says, "Do you have half the money?" Hmm. Right. That's a that's a big one that they always throw. They've been throwing that one out for thirty years. You got half the money. If I had half the money, why would I be well, talking? talking I just, to I just you, go right? shoot the movie. <laughs> so I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go get half the money. So then you feel comfortable coming in. No, we the executive producers that I work for. Like I said, they're my heroes. I love them. They're brave people because they finance the films. Mm. They get them. We get them hundred percent done, and then right, right, then the decision right. comes down. Will it be? acquired right yeah. right i'm in the acquisitions business not the in production business now right, right. does lifetime channel make movies that are made in house in what do they call them in house in production movies right. yeah. yes they do i'm right. not part of that You're not I'm part, part of that. I'm, I, i'd like to be but i'm not uh, they do the acquisition side so i'm mm. telling you too much information here so <laughs> so what was i the mean this is, valid. this is good information what was the question about oh, oh which better sag the yeah. other thing too about non sag <coughs> is these actors, we're in Los Angeles, California, USA, everybody. Yeah. We have a lot of great actors. All right. who, no shortage of actors. Who are willing to work <laughs> FICOR, who are wanting to get their reel, who are great, mm-hmm. who have talent, who have the eagerness to learn. And I don't mind you know, pointing out a few things on set that they may not have known before, if that happens. And then other times I get actors who show up in these non-SAG movies who are like, Dude, and I tell them all the time, I go, you should be a series regular. And they go, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. So there are great actors in, in non-SAG world in Los Angeles. And, you know, they're working and they're happy to do so. And our attitude is, listen, SAG doesn't want to be in business with us. We would love to be in business with SAG. They don't want to be in business with us, very, which is fine. And so we have to do non-SAG. Join us if you want to. If you can't because you're union and you don't want to cross the union line, right. God bless you. I, I completely respect that and love you for that. Right. No harm, no foul. And when I get a SAG show, I'll see you on a SAG show. Mm. Right. That's my attitude to actors. I love them all. And I get it why you don't want to go do the non-SAG thing. That's cool. 
that's great. Or if you do do the non-sag thing because you want to work because life is short because you want to you want to do this thing as opposed to wait around for it, right. I get that too. Right. Yeah. And I hope everybody makes enough money to pay their bills, et cetera, et cetera. I wish everybody had massive amounts of residuals like SAG wants them to have. Sometimes the money's there, sometimes they're in. Right, yeah. right. You know, you do, you, do, you do the best you can. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Anyway, so it's, it's a thing. Interesting. Yeah. It makes you wonder. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a listen. Lot, a lot that goes on behind closed doors, you know, that we don't know about. Yeah. Well, this is pretty much open. This is this is open news. This isn't anything. Yeah. But, I mean, so maybe you haven't heard but about I it yet. I probably didn't know about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Right. So. So, so... Doug, you've been you've been doing this 20, 30, 30 years? I made my first Super 8 film in 1978. Wow. That was when I was a kid. I directed my first film in night, 10 years? years later. How old are you? I'm old, man. Wow. You look really good. God bless you for saying that. Yeah. Good yeah. thing this is a podcast. It's radio. You can't <laughs> <laughs> look, we are on YouTube as well, so you will yes. see Doug's face. <laughs> oh, no, you I'm will. Scared. <laughs> I'm really scared. Anyway, no. Anyway, so yeah, I've been doing a... I've been doing it all my life, and I love it. And you know, um, do do you see just kind of just looking at your life now? Oh, you were asking me about streaming. I did ask you I mean, about. I, I streaming. skipped that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Thanks ask you for asking about, about my life. No streaming. I think I don't know much about how that all works, but I know that the Writers Guild has a good point. Right. I support them. Right, right. Even though I'm not a part of that team. Right. I support them big time. Yeah. I mean, they. My attitude is this: We run a sag. We run a sag-friendly set, even though we are not sag. Mm. We have our, you know, our proper breaks. Uh, we have our proper turnaround. We have our proper call times, etc., mm. like that. Why? Because there's a union that established that. So we run them exactly like they would run the union. Because if we didn't, our actors would come to set and say, no, 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 no. All right, you got to do it the way it's done yeah. over here on the right. other shows. Otherwise, I'm not showing up for your little... Right, because when I was on the show with you guys, it was very organized, oh. just like a union. That's why I thought it was union. That's right. I thought That's it was right. It, exactly. Like when meal penalty hits and my first AD says, Doug, you got to stop shooting. I'm like, okay, we're going to lunch. <laughs> yeah. No matter what we're doing, we're going to lunch. <laughs> right. We're not hitting meal penalty, you know, whatever. We're doing all that wonderful stuff. So... If that's the way it is for SAG, once the writers make it established that, look, streaming is it now, and right. we want to be paid for our work in that world, then that should hopefully trickle down, I would think, to the non-WGA world as well, because the union went there first to establish it. Right, right. So, so I do support the unions. Am I a part of one? No. Would I love to be a part of one? Sure. I hope someday the, the jobs come to me and it is a DGA job and I can do it or a WGA, GA job, a WGA job and I can do it. That would be great. And I'll support it when I get there. But right now that isn't the work that I'm getting. But do yeah. I support what they're all about? You betcha. Yes. You betcha. Okay. And, and God bless them. Now, you know, but I'm sure there's WGA, DGA people in there. Then why don't you stop working? Why don't you do that? It's like, <laughs> and I want to say to those guys, you don't want to work on these movies anyway. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you don't want to do these shows anyway. Right. Otherwise you would. So anyway. Right. So anyway. All right. So just just looking big picture now, you've been doing this for ten years, over ten years, over ten over years. 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> like where where like do you see it coming to an end anytime no. soon or no. like how how long do you want to direct? As long as I can till they till they I want to die in post. <laughs> yeah. I want to wrap picture and drop right there on set. Are you kidding me? I don't want to stop. Hell no. That sucks. That brings back bad memories of um, just people dying on set. Like I, I know. Think, I think at Paramount Studios, um, I think it was on Glee. When I was working on Glee, I think the guy, he worked up in the perms. I don't know if he had to do with sound. Oh, God. Don't get dark. What are they called? The sound. perms? The That's perms. what they're called? Yeah, they're called the perms. Oh, I didn't know that. They're yes. The perms. Okay. <laughs> that shows how much I've been working at Paramount. <laughs> But he had a heart attack. Ouch. Oh, God. Don't go dark on this, V. I know. But it's sad. And then we found him up there, and he he just, yeah. He was just gone I for hours. We for lost hours? For hours. I lost At my good friend. At least five hours. I lost my good friend just this December. He was editing He was editing a film that we were doing, Wes Sneeringer, and he's a terrific editor. And he broke, I think about him every day. Wow. And, it, and he just he died working on, his, on the film. At, 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 in the editing chair, we don't know the reason, 
anyway, yeah. I shouldn't talk about things it. Things happen, but, but yeah. Things happen. And, uh, you know, young guy, too. Right. Mid-40s. See. See. So, I mean, stuff, stuff happens. So, yeah. Right. So. That yeah. one, that's how you want to. <laughs> well, I. Right. Let, if, if I'm going to go. <laughs> no, this is something you do for life. I yeah. think anybody right. within the sound of our voices right now who says, I'll give the film business a year. My advice to you is, listen, don't right. even wait a don't, year. Don't even... Just quit now. <laughs> Because if you're going to give it a don't year, waste your time. don't waste your time. Right. You're either in or you're out. You're yeah. either 100% committed or you're not. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of people come to L.A. and they go, well, I'll give this five years and then I'll go back to Oklahoma. Please, go back to Oklahoma now. Mm. Yeah. There's too, much people, too many people on the freeways. Right. You know? So it's like, you know. <laughs> Real talk. You know, That's I mean, true, yeah. do it or don't. Yeah. Do it or right. don't. Stay in it or not. And you know what? And if I, if I weren't, I'm not kidding you. I'm nuts. If I weren't lucky enough to have the phone ring to hire me to direct and write these movies, I got a camera in my spare bedroom. Mm. I got a tripod. I got lights. I got sound. I know how to write. I know Veronica. Mm -hmm. I know actors. Mm -hmm. I would go make a movie on my own. Yeah. Mm. I'm not going to stop doing the thing that I love right. because the phone doesn't ring. Right, right. You just do it. Keep I, creating. I do it for my sanity, Yeah. Mm. which there isn't much left, but I do it for my sanity so I don't go nuts because if I'm not doing this, I mean, I'm not inventing a story. If I'm not creative in some way, uh, uh, I, 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 get, I, get, I get to be a real bummer. I mean, it's a part of your life. It's like know, actors who breathe don't, it. Yeah, actors who don't get a chance to act, they're, they're miserable inside. Yeah. They have to do it. Mm -hmm. They have to do it. Yeah. Writer has to write. You know? So I just got, you got to do it. Yeah. So that's, that's, and luckily the phone rings, but when it doesn't ring, I'll just make it on my own. So yeah. whatever. Right so that's up. the answer to your question. I hear that. Right whatever. Right up. You have uh, you say you have a wife. You have kids as well. Yeah, I got a wonderful wife, and I do, we don't have children. No, no children. Okay. Right. How, how, how what does your wife do? She works in the business as well. She's in she's in Montreal. Okay. And she's an executive assistant, and she's got this resume with all these. Uh, and you remind me of her. You remind me of Meghan Markle. <laughs> you do. Oh my god. Oh my have god. you gotten that before? All the time. You get like, that all the on time. On the voice, like on the reality side, they call me Duchess. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, you know, she, yes. she's got Meghan Markle and all these other wonderful <laughs> people nice on her resume. She's a, she's an executive assistant that will, when big shows will come into Montreal or commercials or whatever, yeah. she'll be an assistant to these yeah. uh, these wonderful big people. And wow, awesome. Well. That's, That's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. So wait, y'all do the long distance thing? You do the long distance thing, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's How about beautiful. yourself? Are you spoken for? <laughs> I, I, I am. Okay. I, you, got a, I, you said you had a kid. Oh, yeah, I have three. Oh, my gosh. You're three. a busy man. Yeah, my oldest has graduated high school. I got one that's going to be a sophomore. Then my baby, she's starting kindergarten in a wow. couple of months. So the whole range. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're busy. Very busy. How do you have time to do this? <laughs> That's a great question. And the, film <laughs> and the film festival. He does that is a everything. Great question. Everything. Um it, it, it is a labor of love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it is a labor of love. I got bamboozled in the start of the film festival, but Oh really? Uh yeah. yeah. Wasn't your idea? Somebody said it, was, it wasn't my idea, it was my partner's. <laughs> but idea. you love it. No, no, no. But I mean I like I like putting on events. I never thought of like doing a film festival. Um, but you know, when my my partner, my former partner brought me in. Um, you know, I, I just, I just loved it. Like it, it was dope. Is she one of your hosts? Yes, yes. Monica <laughs> helps out know that? a whole I lot. Am. She I comes am. through, helps coordinate everything. Um, you know, she's the boss. I'm she's learning the, boss the business there. side of it. I was like, I need to learn everything for this film festival, and it's fun. You know, getting to know all these filmmakers and stuff, and uh, these, you know, creating these relationships with these people all around the world. It's, it's just, it's a blessing. It's, yeah, it's dope. I'm grateful for it. Now, so. do do people come? From all around the world, fly in to to Some? watch their movies. Yeah, yeah. this this yes. year we had people from Florida. Um, I think we have people from New York. Mm -hmm. A lady came from Arizona. Was she in there? Yeah, she was in Arizona. Uh, yeah, um, uh, upstate yeah. New York. Houston. for Out and about. Yeah, yeah. That was one of my favorite films, by the way. Yeah, I want yeah. you to see it. It's like a film that out out and about. It's out called Out and About, yeah. but this look, look. film is like something you've never seen before. Yeah. It won it won a Best Feature Film at our at our festival. It's a really good. Nice. You need to watch it. And it's it. an Australian film. No, 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 no. Not an Australian film. No, no, no. Um, the guy is it's based upstate, out of upstate New York, I believe. Okay, was it New York? Yeah, I believe so. Or was it Seattle? No, upstate New York. No, it was New York. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes. You're right. So, um, yeah, it's just about a guy like taking a stroll through the neighborhood and. 
I think you would love you it. You know, having the interaction with everybody. Yes. You, you would like it. You it's, would love it's it, It's really, really good. It's very it's creative. really, really good. Cool. And it's just him narrating it. Like, he's just speaking, and he's you can see him thinking about what he's saying in the movie, throughout the whole movie, throughout the whole film, if that makes any sense. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So he's it's, taking it's a like a, uh It's like, look who's talking, but yes. with adults. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sounds like a novel. Where you hear Almost. what's going on inside. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. It was amazing. So you have you have to see it. I'm gonna okay. send it to you. Yeah. If we can't are we able to send it to, to Doug? I don't know if we could send can we, can he see it. I need to go I need to find it and how would he be able to stream see it? it? I need to pay I, for it I and stream think it. He yeah. got dis- I think he got distributed. I think he got distributed. Did he? Um if he does, I'll I'll let you know and I'll okay. send you know, it over. Yeah. Speaking of streaming, that's the wonderful thing about things like Amazon and these other things that allow independent filmmakers to get their films out there. Right. Right. Otherwise, they wouldn't see, they'd be on the shelf. Right, right. And right. so that's right. nice. I mean, you know, they may not get a, a big theatrical release, obviously, or a cable release or whatever, but at least they'll have that. Right. right. And they can, whatever, tell everybody about it and get right. it. I mean, I've got that one movie I told you about, The Hammer on Vimeo and Demand. <laughs> yeah. Plug it again. Uh, that You know, you can watch it. Right. I don't have a distribution deal for it. That's it. I just yeah. put it on Vimeo. That's okay. it. Yeah, so. that's how you market it. Well, I don't market it very well, but anyway, it's there. Yeah. So anyway, but I I appreciate. It. But anyway, so that that's nice that people yeah. have that now. Yeah. We didn't have that before. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We didn't have that before. Yeah, there right. there there yeah. were no other outlets yeah. besides right. the movie theater. Sure. Right. Now now do you do you think it's getting too convoluted? Because one because like I'm a music guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I personally feel like you know the floodgates are open and everybody comes in and now you have. All this noise around, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. sure, that, that kind of clouds sure. up the the actual good music that's put out there. Do you kind of feel that same way about film? Yes and no. Um, I think that you can make you can make a movie. Is it going to work or not? Right. Is it going to entertain an audience or not? Is the script well constructed or not? A lot of people can go do it now because the technology is definitely more graspable. You do not have to shoot on 35 millimeter anymore and you can shoot it on your DSLR and edit it on your laptop and boom, right. you can upload it. Yeah. So that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that it's now it's no excuse filmmaking. So don't come to me, students out there, and say, oh, I couldn't get my film done. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Mm. Yes, you can. Stop with the excuses. Mm. You can do it. Mm-hmm. So does, But you still got to do it well. Right. And if you don't do it well, well, it'll may not see the light of day or whatever you still got to do it well Mm -hmm. uh and it made it i think well i know for sure the technology has forced us to get better at what we do Mm. for instance you know just the fact that you can whatever uh uh paint out things that are a problem in your frame Mm. miniature special effects or vfx stuff or or like I just, we just did this uh, uh, hunting sequence with uh, bow and arrow and crossbow. Mm-hmm. Well, I was able to shoot that safely because we planned on having VFX arrows fly through the mm. fly through the screen. Right. You couldn't you couldn't do that? Yeah, you couldn't do that twenty years ago. Right, right. You, it, forget it. So so uh, and you know, we won't talk about a certain movie that was made in New Mexico where somebody might have died on it. There was no reason in my mind mm. for there to be not only a weapon there that could fire a real right, right. Uh, a, a real live round. There was no reason for a weapon that could fire a movie blank hmm. because we can now do that in After Effects. Right, right, right. So simply. Oh, it doesn't look real enough. Well, get the fuck over it. <laughs> it's safer. Right. Do that. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That's my attitude. So, so... That's been a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. So I think it's made us get better. It's made movies, they can't, as people get hurt on movies, they, they can be a lot safer now. Right, right. They can be a lot safer if you want to you know, pull off you know, special effects. So, so that's been great. That, that part of it's been great, and it's upped our game. Nice. And, and, and has, it clo- has it clogged the pipeline as far as distributable, quote-unquote, product? Well, right. yes and no. And now there's, you know... X amount of channel, channels. There's so many movies and, and TV shows getting made. I mean, it's it's amazing. Yeah, right. it's literally amazing. So it's spread it out. It's democratized it. More people are working. I guess, you know, we're gonna see how it shakes out. It's one of those things that you don't know because we're in it right now. Right, right. We don't know how it's all gonna shake out. But 
I think it's better than when it was when uh, uh, Junior here was growing up. You know, you had ABC, CBS, NBC, and G. Who else? Uh, that was it. KCLP probably. Maybe, no, they were they were showing they were showing the reruns. I'm talking oh. about I'm talking about people that made television. Oh, made television. It was those shows. three yeah, networks. Yeah. It was those three networks or go home. Yeah. And if you weren't in that crowd, you weren't making films. Right. Yeah. Right. Or you weren't making television movies. Right. That's for shit sure. Right. You weren't doing independent films. You know, John Cassavetes might have been doing a few of them, but not yeah. nobody else. Right. Right. So, right. You know, you weren't. So now, uh, we you know we can go out and make a movie tomorrow. How great is that? Yeah. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I, I don't mind it. <coughs> I kind of like the fact that it's opened up uh, avenues for people to make movies, period. Definitely. So, got no problem with it, frankly, from that. And if you're not, you know what? If you're worried that you're, uh, that, oh my gosh, uh, those independent filmmakers that are sending their movies to uh, Beyond Hollywood Film Festival are going to take my job someday, well, then maybe I'm not doing my job well enough. Right. You know? Maybe, maybe I'm not making movies that are good enough for my, for my uh, buyers. Right, right, right. If, if, if you're worried about that, then get on your game. That's yeah. my attitude. Real then talk. get better at it. Real talk. Practice. Mm -hmm. You know? It's like... We're talking about practice. Practice. Right. <laughs> get out there and practice. So anyway, that's my tood. Anyway. Um, be? Doug, any last message that you want to send to future filmmakers out there? Anything that you want to say? Yes. Um, yes. Let it be known. Have fun. <laughs> it's not about anything else but having fun. If you're, if you're making a movie or you're working for somebody in some office, and you go home at the end of the day, and you're not having fun, there's a problem. Mm. We're not here for any other great other reason than it should be fun. Now, fun as in party all day and don't do anything? No. You work hard, but you have fun doing the work. It's gotta, you got to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. got to enjoy, enjoy it. it. Yeah. You know? I had, a, I had a, a student of mine come to L.A. years ago, and uh, she got this wonderful job with this big time producer and I said oh my god that's great congratulations she says I know it's amazing and so a couple months later she called me up I go hey how you doing and she goes well not too good and I go what's the matter she goes well the boss and I we don't I go she's a raving lunatic isn't she <laughs> and, and and she goes yeah <laughs> yeah and I said listen we're having a a, a, a crew meeting for a show that we start shooting next week we could use you on if you want a PA for us. Why don't you come to the meeting today? We're a, we're a fun group to work with. And she started to cry. And wow. she said, she said, I'll be there. Aww. And she's on her way. And she's, she's a wonderful line producer now. But the point was of that tale is she was working for a tyrant. And there are people in this business who are tyrants. Yeah. You don't have to work for them. Mm. There are other people that are nice people. You don't have to work for them. You don't yeah. have to go home with an ulcer. Right, right. right. You know? That's my attitude. Every day coming well, that's home. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, anxiety. man. Yeah. It's just a movie. Get over it. You know, so that's my, have fun. Have fun. That's have it. Have fun. Yeah. Um, thank you, Doug. Thank you. We appreciate you coming on, man. This is wonderful. This great conversation. What, what an ego boost. Somebody cares about your life. They ask you to, they ask you to come and talk about your yes. life. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if you're on like Instagram or anything, yeah. but you have any social media to tell the people they want to follow you? Uh, I don't. <laughs> so, so you know you know i yeah i don't you just gotta know doug so yeah gotta be special <laughs> <laughs> well man we we appreciate you no i have a oh. facebook my my wife has a facebook page that she she manages and i know facebook is for old people but there's a facebook page doug campbell director nice. if you want to contact me there uh and that's about it that's about frankly. it any last minute so. projects you want to plug in uh no no i've told you all about them Okay. I've told you all about them. Thank you very much. For I, got my, I got it off. I got my we, shit off. We got it all. Don't yeah. forget to watch Hammer. The Hammer. Video, yeah. The Hammer. With Michael Madsen. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of Michael Madsen. Yes. Anyway. Don't awesome. Forget. Awesome. Guys, we appreciate you uh, yes. tuning in. Um, whether you are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channels. Uh, we appreciate all the love and support. Um, this is the Beyond Take Two podcast brought yes. to you by Beyond Hollywood International Film Festival. I'm your host, Madge. And I'm your host, Veronica. And this is episode 22 with the great Jeez. Doug Campbell. Um, you're, a good, you're a good interviewer. You're really good. <laughs> you, you got this down. I try. You know? I try. Yeah. I mean, I think I need to come to your school, though. I mean, you got the voices down and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can no. switch it up. And, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, should do some impressions. Get animated. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Uh, but we appreciate you guys. Um, we'll see you next week. Right. Tune in next week. All right. Now I want to tune in. Okay. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Beyond take two, take a walk beyond Hollywood, beyond the lights, camera action, is the hard work and passion. Beyond take two, take a walk beyond Hollywood, beyond the lights, camera action, is the hard